um, Morena Chutfano. So Kitsa asked me to do a um, update on how um, I found the October November spiritual challenge of sharing faith and um, confession time. I have found this challenge really um, difficult, which I guess was sort of the point of me having a um, spiritual discipline that was challenging. Um, I think um, one aspect that I found challenging was uh, just praying about it so that I could actually see opportunities. Sometimes it felt a little bit like um, I was just trying to tick off the list on my spiritual challenge um, and it sort of felt, um, for, felt like I um, was going to force it. Um, I did, however, have a good conversation with um, a friend of mine just sort of about um, current issues and, um, yeah, we were able to, I was able to talk a little bit about um, sort of uh, what I believed um, and, and uh, she shared a little bit of about um, what she, she believed. I did find that um, perhaps I wasn't as um, good at just asking and listening. Um, yeah, so that is something, again, that um, I'd like to, um, to work on further. So a bit of a mixed bag over the last month. Um, still a lot of room for um, improvement. Morning and greetings to you all. We're following a series called Faithfulness in an Age of Deception from the book of Timothy, Second Timothy actually. And uh, the passage today that I'm um, speaking from is this, Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 to 8. Paul writing to his protege Timothy says this, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Paul was reviewing his life, reviewing his ministry and his mission. And he's reflecting probably on the span of years now as his life is drawing to a close, as his ministry is closing down, as it were. He's wanting to impart to Timothy those things which he thinks might be of value to him, might be profitable. I have already been poured out, he says, like a drink offering, and the time for my departure from this life is near. And then supremely, he adds, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. One commentator has put it like this in summary. Paul was agonizing the good agony. In other words, we're calling the good and the bad and the nasty about the years of his mission and ministry. Have you ever seen the old movie Goodbye, Mr. Chips? that first came out with Peter O'Toole playing the part of Mr. Chippendale. Or maybe the later movie, Mr. Holland's Opus. Both of these stories, both of these movies, tell the story of men who committed their lives at one school for the whole of their career. In the good, the bad, the disappointing and the ugly, and it follows their lives, their families' lives, the agonies in the case of Mr. Chips losing a child and struggling with his wife through all of that, 
and all the rest of it. And finally in the movies, you see their ministry, well, it was a ministry, their teaching summed up in their farewells. And in some ways, I think this is what Paul is trying to impart to us too. He reminisces. He sums up what ministry has been like for him. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, living in this life, in this world, at this time, as much as it was in Paul's time, is never easy. There's deception. There are shadows about us. There is doubt. We doubt ourselves sometimes as we travel through life's journey. Paul's response in a faithful way is to speak about his life poured out and in fact, his life was given, was poured out for others. Like a libation, like a drink offering, like a sacrificial lamb. And Paul says, after all of this, my departure is near. He has cause to reflect on his faithful life. My departure is near, like figuratively a boat slipping its moorings, or a time to strike tent. But Paul doesn't reflect in some kind of melancholy, depressed, regretful way. To the Philippians, similarly, he says, I am being poured out. I am glad and I rejoice with all of you. So not some kind of downcast way of thinking, oh, this is it. But no, I am glad. I rejoice in the trials and in the celebrations. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Paul uses three, three kinds of metaphor here. The first is the military metaphor. I have fought the good fight. The second is the athletic metaphor. I have finished the race. And thirdly, a religious metaphor. I have kept the faith. But I think predominantly, Paul often refers in his letters to running a race, to the athletic metaphor. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, he says, Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. And in Hebrews, we have another metaphor that's Again, the athletic metaphor. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Of course, Paul didn't write Hebrews, or we don't think he did. In other words, Paul is talking about strenuously contending for the working out of our faith. And what's the reward? Well, he goes on in verse 8 of our passage today to say that he longs to be crowned, to have the winner's wreath, the crown, placed on his head, the crown of righteousness. We, some years ago, watched the movie called Amazing Grace, the story of William Wilberforce's fight to overcome slavery. And in the movie, he visits his old mentor, John Newton. And John Newton, diminishing in his faculties with age, recalls writing that great hymn, Amazing Grace. 
and he says, I was blind, but now I see. And he turns to William and he says, did I not write those words? Of course, the answer is yes. And it's no bad thing to recall our journey of faith, to recall the things that we've attained, to recall the things we've written about faith. You know, I've done that. When Keith asked me to preach this particular passage, he said, it's not as though we've chosen it for you because your days are numbered, your years of ministry are up. Far from it. They're not. But I've had cause to reflect too over the years of my ministry. There have been marvellous times. There have been anointed times. And I give God all the praise and thanks. But at the same time, there have been extremely difficult times. When I first contemplated the call to ministry, an old church friend of my mother's said, does Derek really know what he's doing? How tough it can be? Well, of course, yes, it has been tough at times. But I choose in the Lord to remember the good mountaintop experiences of faith, the times when things have been attained in the Lord to the glory of God, and to place in their right place those things which need to be let go of to be forgiven, to be released and not remembered with any power. But like Paul, I'm able to say it's all been worth it so far. It's worth it. Paul, of course, in what he writes here, is probably thinking of the Greek national games, the allusions to the Greek national games, athletic games. And he says, I have fought the good fight. And he says, now there is in store for me a crown where God, the righteous judge, will award to me on the day of Christ that crown of righteousness. Paul, you see, doesn't resile in any way from grasping the nettle of the difficulty of call, the difficulty of mission, the difficulty of engaging in ministry. And the goal is the crown of righteousness. Jill and I watched not long ago the movie documentary movie called Remember 59, The Legacy of Billy Graham. And you'll find this disc in the church library. I commend it to you. And in this movie, an elderly, now elderly Australian pastor, I think by the name of Bill Boys, if I recall correctly, reflects on how his life was changed by the Billy Graham Crusades in Australia. Bill was a man who was a degenerate, probably an alcoholic, certainly a man who was a waster and who simply had no direction in life. Billy Graham's ministry ministered to him in such a way that his life was changed. And now an elderly man, he reflects on the years of ministry, of being a pastor, the effect on his family, and the fact that many of his family are now in pastoral ministry of some kind themselves. The crown of righteousness. Bill, like Paul, attained that crown of righteousness. And on the day of God's appearing in Jesus Christ, there will be that celebration of crossing the line and winning the race. On that day, Paul elsewhere says, the day of the Messiah's coming. 
and we all look forward to that day ourselves. The day when the Lord, the righteous judge, will award the crown, the prize. You know, I would rather stand before a righteous judge than appear before many of the earthly judges that we know of today. In an age where there is deception, where there is sly conniving, to appear before the righteous judge. That is the thing. Paul takes stock in this passage. He rejoices and celebrates that he's arrived at this conclusion in his ministry and life. It's all been worth it. All who have longed for Christ's appearing, says Paul in verse 8, he includes himself. Those who have crossed the line, those who have been constant in their love, in obeying their calling, those who have not loved the world, as Paul observes in verse 10, those who have not been distracted, who have been drawn away, have slipped away. Paul joins with all those who cross the line as winners. He reflects on how his life has been poured out. He literalistically speaks about how his life has been poured out. He's been shipwrecked. He's trudged the roads. He's crossed the oceans. He's been beaten up. His blood has been poured out. He's been misunderstood. He's been misused. All for the sake of the calling, the witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And whereas the Jews of Paul's time went to Zion, to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the faithful place, Paul is saying, no, in effect, I have been called out to take that holy place, to take Zion out to the world. And in effect, he's urging us to do the same to go out with the good news of Jesus Christ to the world, to those who are about us, those that we love, those that we work with, those that we are in the sports club with. My ministry didn't finish when I retired from ICBC last year. A new phase of my ministry began. I'm now an industrial chaplain, a staff supporter, I go about industry supporting staff in the agony of the age in which we live, this deceptive age. I take the opportunities to broadcast the love of God in Jesus Christ, the gospel of the good news. And yes, I still do a bit of preaching round and about. I've been retreaded the, fa the race the fight, the call of faith, hasn't ended for me yet. How is it with you? How is it with you? We are to go out. We are to be poured out. We are to run the race. We are to keep the faith. Yes, we might be bruised. Yes, we might be misunderstood. Yes, some may stand against us. But, you know, every night I read the prayer dictionary, the prayer diary of Barnabas Fund, and pray for a persecuted people somewhere in the world. And many of these people live in fear of death, but they do not stop witnessing to Jesus Christ. They keep the faith, even in the most extreme circumstances. How are we doing in this age of deception, in a time of extreme trial? We are called like Paul to go out, to proclaim 
the divine rule of God, to be prepared for the kickback, because there will be kickback. You challenge the powers of the world with the power of Jesus Christ, then people don't like it always. There will be some corresponding kickback. But we are to go into training. We are to prepare for the fight. And finally, as we wear that crown, that wreath of righteousness, one day we will hear the words from Jesus Christ, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Finish the race well. Bless you.